Um, hi everyone, um, I'm Erica Dambro and this is uh, Michael McGarren Cummins and we are the co-leaders of Blue Lab India um, and this is our external design review presentation. Um, so a brief introduction to our team. Um, we are partnered with a nonprofit in India called the Setco Foundation um, which has connections to a U of M alumnus. Um, the Setco Foundation does humanitarian work in India, in Gujarat. They work primarily in these early childhood education centers called Anganwadis. Um, yeah, this is a picture of their Anganwadi. Our Blue Lab team was formed in fall of 2013 um, in order to address some of the technological needs of the community that, was, that the Setco Foundation works in. So our mission statement Something happened that was weird with it, but um, our mission statement is basically to um, co-design appropriate technology um, that addresses the health needs of the community that we're working with. So a little bit more about the community that we're working with. Uh, we're working with Kalol in the state of Gujarat in western India. So Kalol is composed of 12 sub-communities which range from rural to semi-urban. Um, and what that generally means is that people don't have cars. Uh, they take buses to work or uh, ride bikes or walk. Families are generally of four to eight people and low income. So the jobs are mostly unskilled labor in addition to construction and small businesses in the area. Uh, the community is 30% Muslim and 70% Hindu. Uh, this has caused problems in the past. With uh, In 2002, there was violence due to um, intergroup tension between the, the Muslim population and the Hindu population. So that's something to be wary of as we go into the community, always know the, the background. Um, it's a very prominent caste system. So that's something to keep in mind when we go into the community. Some people might be uncomfortable um, if there's some sort of caste difference with the people in the room or who we're talking to. Um, and a few cars, I already mentioned that. So the problem and need that we're trying to solve so we really wanted to go from the beginning and tell the story of where we initially started with the project and where we are now in terms of our problem. So in the beginning, uh, Setco came to us and was very clear that water was the issue with the community. People are getting sick, typhoid, malaria, diarrhea, etc. And we initially thought, okay, water filtration technology is the need. This is what we need to address. But as we went along, got more information, things started to evolve and we realized, okay, let's use this project as a true needs assessment. Let's go to the community and find a solution that fits the community instead of going there with a pre-cooked water filter that we then try to fit the community to. So this goes along with the additional information we received, which is the Gujarat Water Initiative. So somewhere along in our process, we figured out that uh, the government of Gujarat already has this Gujarat Water Initiative, which is supposedly supposed to provide clean water and sanitation to all of Gujarat, which is the area that we're working with. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to solve all the community problems. Um, what it means is that more research needs to be done. We need to go to the community and figure out, okay, what is the actual impact of our project of this Gujarat Water Initiative? Is it going to be effective? When is it going to be implemented? Was municipal water really the issue to begin with? You know, maybe a sanitation in the town is a problem. Maybe standing water and mosquitoes are the problem. We don't really know. So what we need to go do is really investigate um, the water situation in the town. So um, here is an overview of water in the community as we understood it before we knew about the Gujarati Water Initiative, which happened in the last like two months to give a context and um, is supposed to, the plant is supposed to be completed in May. Um, and it's already like in the works and uh, the people we work with have been visiting it. So that's pretty cool. Um, we actually got a huge report email about it in our inbox yesterday. So um, this might have been a little bit more complete, but that's okay. Um, anyway, so the Anganwadi, the Early Childhood Education Center has water piped to an underground tank, which, or yeah, well, pipe to an underground tank, and then they pump it to a syntax tank on the top of their, on their roof, which provides water pressure um, for their sinks and such. Um, some homes get running water for two hours a day. 
However, most people line up at community pipes to fill water receptacles, and then they transport them to their homes. Um, the water, before the Gujarati Water Initiative, the water was not potable, um, but could be used for washing. Um, and the water quality decreases during monsoon season, which is June through October. Um, and poor water quality, as we've said, causes diseases amongst children and, and adults. So um, now that there's this centralized water filtration system, we're not really sure if point of use water filtration technology is still applicable. However, um, it, as you can see, like piping water for two hours a day means that you have to store it somewhere. So maybe the contamination isn't occurring uh, from the pipe. It's occurring because people store their water. And as Mike said, like mosquitoes and such. Um, so we're thinking about you know, contamination at different points, as well as cost and reliability of the water. Because if it's too expensive for people to get clean water, they might still want to um, invest in like low cost point of use filtration. OK, so before we decided to switch over to a more needs assessment intensive project, uh, we started prototyping two different types of filters, a biosand filter and a ceramic filter. Um, and so this was really to test the effectiveness of the different filters because that was our plan. Go to India, make filters, and solve the water problems. Uh, but after we figured out, okay, we really need to take a step back and reevaluate our project, we still decided to go along with the prototyping. We feel that it gives us a good experience with building, good experience with the design process in general, um, and a good feel for how long it might take to design, build, and test a solution so that next year or the year after when we begin building for the town, we sort of know what our timeline might look like. So the first one, the biosand filter. Um, I know a lot of you are familiar with biosand filters, uh, but essentially it's a slow sand filter that uses a bio layer of bacteria as well as um, a large layer of sand to deprive pathogens of oxygen, which kills them. Um, and we based our design off of the Pantanal project, uh, which is a project that works in Brazil with biosand filters and other types of sustainable technology. Uh, cost and Hagley Gap also helped us out a lot with uh, our biosand design. So we're in the process right now of building a five inch PVC prototype to test flow rates. Uh, flow rate through the biosand filter has a lot to do with how effective it is. If it goes too quickly, there's not enough time to deprive pathogens of oxygen. If it goes too slowly, it's not really practical for, uh, for use because there's not enough water coming out of it. So the other type of filter that we decided to prototype um, are ceramic filters. And part of the reason we decided to prototype ceramic filters is because of the um, ceramics like culture in the town. A lot of the women um, like paint ceramic pots and people, that's just part of the culture. So um, it was culturally applicable. At any rate, um, we were prototyping a filter to, again to test the flow rate. A ceramic filter is like basically your ceramic pot, but we include things such as flour or, um, or sawdust in the mixture so that when you fire it, it, uh, it burns out and then it's more porous. And also you coat the inside with collodial silver to kill bacteria. Um, so our design came from documents from Engineers Without Borders and Potters for Peace. Um, we worked a lot with a man in the ceramic studio in the art school who had experience with designing ceramic filters. Um, the final composition of our, so we started with flour and sawdust, and um, just to test the differences between the two, um, the flour didn't really work out because the filters got really dry and cracked um, when they were fired. However, um, the final composition included 2.5 pounds of red clay body, uh, 0.5 pounds of sawdust, and two cups of grog. And so we were able to create a filter um, and test the flow rate, which it was a little bit fast, so um, if we were to continue the process more, we would um, adjust the percentage of sawdust in order to figure out the optimal flow rate. So needless to say, we've done all this prototyping, um, but the main focus of the last couple, well, the last month and then the next couple months is designing our like comprehensive needs assessment trip, which is like 
the most important for figuring out what the future of our project will be. So the goals of our trip are to build connections in the community, um, establish professional contacts, determine the needs or need, um, and develop capacity and expertise. In addition, we want to um, include lots of documentation because we feel like communicating and um, documenting things we've figured out is very important, especially as project continues into future years. Um, needless to say, we'll be traveling for the entire month of May, so that will give us hopefully plenty of time to um, hit all of these objectives. We're just going to kind of go through and talk about our strategies for um, each goal. Okay, so building connections in the community. This is going to be the main focus for the first section of our trip, uh, anywhere from the first four days to the first week and a half or so. Um, and so this is going to be building connections. It's really about overcoming the novelty factor. You know, the foreigners swooping into a country um, and saving the day, you know, and sort of going in for three days and swooping out and then everyone forgets about us. What we're trying to do is really insert ourselves into the community, understand who we're talking to, who we're dealing with, and how we can best help the community without um, harming the, the culture in the community or having any negative impacts. So how we plan on going about doing that, um, for the first week we're going to volunteer in the Yangon bodies, just help out, talk to people, see what we can do, not really talk about anything technical really, but just make personal connections so that we can build trust as we move forward. Uh, playing games with children, uh, best way to the hearts of parents is to just play soccer with their kids, board games, what have you. Um, attending workshops at the Young and Vadi. So uh, every week they have workshops in the, the childhood centers uh, from workshops for women to uh, sex ed for teenage boys to uh, like teaching sessions for kids. So just attending those, seeing what it's all about, and talking to more people. And then exploring the community. Uh, so that would be just walking around, seeing what's really there, what we can do, and uh, who we can talk to. And then spending time with Priyank. So Priyank is a new addition to our team. He's a, an engineering student in Kalol. Um, and he speaks English. So he's a really valuable resource uh, to talk to and really get a sense for how the community works. And he will essentially function as tour guide, translator, information extraordinaire. Uh, so we have really high hopes for working with Priyank. Um, our next goal is to um, establish professional contacts. And these are the people who we'll, we'll work with to like build technology and such. Um, so I guess we're going to establish those connections by visiting um, the ceramic studio in the village. We're going to visit the like hardware market. Um, we're going to visit the health clinic. We're going to talk to the like local government on an extremely local level and talk to them about the needs and the pains of the community. Um, and we're also going to visit the new water filtration plant because we'd like to see what it's all about. Okay, so then to actually determine the needs and root cause of the problems in the community, uh, this is the bread and butter of our project. So this is really what we want to walk away with as a deliverable. We want this on paper. Um, so we plan on making a water map. So essentially what a water map is, is tracing the source of the water that the villagers drink, wash with, and use from the source to where they actually use it and putting that all on paper. So from the reservoir uh, to the water filtration plant, you know, through the pipes, um, and then wherever else it goes, whether it stands somewhere or is stored somewhere, and then doing our own water testing at each point on that water map. And that'll help us figure out, okay, if water is being contaminated, where is it being contaminated and what can we do about it? Um, furthermore, villager interviews, um, this would be uh, asking a villager to have a sit down where we formally ask them questions, record it, um, and try to get some valuable information. And then workshops and surveys. We plan on doing a lot of educational work in the Yangon body. So whether that may be doing workshops about pathogens in general to adults, children, everyone in between, to doing specifically workshops about water filtration or engineering workshops in general. Just uh, get to know people by having a workshop about engineering or science or you know, an, an interesting workshop like that. Um, and then with those workshops, we plan on doing before and after surveys. 
So see what people know before a workshop and then what they gain from it so we can see what the best practices are. Um, in addition, so we want to develop capacity and expertise. Right now, we, like as much as we talk about it and plan it, we're not really sure how to like go, to an, go into a community um, and overcome a language barrier and like figure out how to navigate social norms and, such, and stuff like that. So um, I guess this goal is kind of um, met just by being there and like trying stuff and acting silly and talking to people. So I guess including like, like I said, crossing language barriers, um, like navigating social norms, um, making personal connections across cultures, um, and making, so I guess giving our project like a better context. So having like an, an actual ex experience from the village, the water, the problem, so that we don't have kind of the abstract view of things that we have now, we'll have like a concrete um, view of things. And then this leads directly into documentation, which is very important. So this is our final goal. Um, and so this is really capturing our trip in words, pictures, and video. Um, a crucial component of our documentation is involving the team back home. So we know that, okay, we have a team of about 15 to 20 active members, and we have six people traveling. The people that are not traveling have worked easily just as hard as people who are traveling to really contribute to the trip and to gather information. So we want to get their feedback continuously throughout the trip. So we plan on having a daily detailed blog post that says <coughs> what we did that day, what we learned, who we talked to, et cetera and having a comment section. So people back home can leave their feedback of, okay, uh, we think you should do this, or talk to this person, or ask this question. And we think that's really, really important. Um, and that would go along with Skype meetings with the team, so having more of a, a personal interaction with the people back home. Um, and then beyond that, just pictures, video. If we do anything, uh, anything technical or anything that would require maybe instructions, just take pictures or video of what we did, and then a bonus would be printing people's pictures for them, so just a, a cool way to interact with people, to take pictures with them and give them sort of a, um, a record of us being with them. Um, yeah. That's you. Oh, I didn't know this one was me. Uh, so our team structure. Uh, we have four sub-teams at the moment. We have ethnographic research and travel preparation as our first one. So this is really researching the best way to do the needs assessment whether that be interviews, uh, workshops, et cetera. So throughout the semester, we're going to be having meetings uh, with that sub-team and all the travelers to do interview preparation, um, uh, overcoming the language barrier, uh, different cultural norms, figuring out uh, how to interact with people. Um, educational workshop preparation. So this team is formulating all the workshops that we're gonna do in the Yangon body and testing them out. So later in the semester, the uh, the EEE day, uh, we're going to have some people go and test out some workshops at that, uh, so that should be a lot of fun. Water testing, this is the team that's working on um, what water testing method would be the best for the trip. So when we go there, we, we want to do our own water testing, and so this team is working on uh, which method is best. And then finally, funding, they've done an awesome job of applying to grants and uh, other competitions. Uh, we currently have about 6,000 going towards travel. So that's, that's a good start. Um, so in conclusion, um, we had a bunch of prelim preliminary work with water filtration technology. Um, then we found out about our Gujati water supply initiative, which kind of threw a wrench into things. Um, needless to say, um, we have some experience working with water and designing technology, and so we have an idea of what the design process for those sort of things look like, and a better idea of point of use water filtration technology, um, and we could, so we could assess whether it would make sense in the community, even with the water supply initiative. Um, needless to say, our future work depends on the results of our needs assessment trip. So we're all kind of anxiously awaiting that and planning, um, planning as you can see. Um, so yeah. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions?
of the new six people on the new trip to India? How did you guys select them for the people that were coming? Um, so originally we were looking at a bunch of those bunch of different technologies. So we took people who um, have been involved in the team and also who um, kind of covered a bunch of different areas of expertise. So we have people from the ceramics team, from the biosand team, um, people who have really good experience in like ethnographic research and stuff like that. Um, we also have an even mix of males and females because that's like really important. Um, we have a girl who speaks Gujarati, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and also someone who speaks Hindi, um, so that's pretty cool too. Um, but all of that stuff kind of played into it. Um, we spent a lot of time figuring out whether bringing six people would be reasonable. Um, but then we decided, because we wanted to balance males and females and we wanted to cover a bunch of different areas of expertise, and I mean, just kind of the best way to gather as much information as possible, like having six people would be, was a, is a good number. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we, so we have um, contact with him as well as um, an employee of the nonprofit called Vir, named Viral, and he is like in the community all the time. So um, I think he's actually from the area, so that's a good thing. However, we're, we actually just sat down yesterday and we're talking about like how to plan this, and we realized that we can, a lot of people will like plan their itinerary for a week trip, like half a week in advance, and so it's really hard for us to like plan an itinerary, like for an entire month, an entire month in advance. Um, so we're just trying to like get an idea of what we want to do in the first week and then like have our list of things that we want to do. And so once we go to the community and solidify our connections with people, we'll be able to talk to whoever it is to get to um, the ceramic student and the health clinic. It's kind of scary that it's a little bit up in the air, but that's kind of the way we figured out we have to do things. So are you talking about when we go there and actually do water testing? Yeah. Um, so we're going to test it at every point in the process because we don't know where the water, if it is water, we don't know where it's being contaminated. So we would test it um, from the municipality for where it's being piped from. We would test it in people's homes, uh, wherever they're storing it. So really trying to pin down what's happening with it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I just didn't know like, what point you were at. Okay. And if, and if it's, you're just going to find it. Yeah, that, that's, yeah that's we're just going to find it. Um, do you know what the characteristics of the non-toxin of the water? Um, coliforms, mainly. Is that idea? Yeah, we have a whole list. We actually did some, we had some water testing results sent to us, but um, we were kind of unsure um, because uh, one of the big problems that they had mentioned in the animal bodies was that people were getting sick. But, um, when we looked at the water testing results, it appeared that there weren't any of the things, like any coliforms or bacteria or things that would be causing sickness. Um, so, yeah, we, like we have a whole 